do ask that you would stand with us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sandy, could we have a roll call, please? Council Member Shippers. I'm here. Ellen Boss. Here. Ingalls. Here. King, Mayor Falcons. Here. <clears throat> okay, at this time we'll have an approval of the agenda um, with some amendments to it. Okay, I will make a motion to approve the agenda. Um, do I have to read all the amenda As amended to add speed radar signs to the city manager's report and to remove the CWTA TA presentation, the Easter egg hunt, the Earth Day celebration, the restorative lake sciences report, and amend the pinwheels for prevention program request as noticed, also to remove the hydro hydroplane race. I'll second. Councilmember Allenboss? Yes. Ingalls? Yes. King? Shippers? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. This time we'll open the floor for our first public comment. Uh, Jen. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me tonight. I'm Jennifer Brown, the superintendent of Cadillac Schools. And I'm just here to give a quick update about what we're doing to um, support our community, our students, and our parents in the mandated school closure. So today was our first official day um, where our students stayed home. We did provide over um, 900 meals um, to families who either came through our drive through line or we are delivering to the home if there's transportation barriers or dietary needs or other reasons that they couldn't come out to get meals. If there are families who didn't know about that um, or are still interested in delivered meals, they can call 876-5000 tomorrow and we're asking for address, number of breakfast, number of lunch, um, and any specific dietary uh, requests that they may have for allergies. So they can order those. We are going to deliver those meals five at a time for five days. So they'll have those meals for five days, and then we'll take our buses um, to deliver meals next Tuesday and the Tuesday after. So we are planning to do that through spring break for our families. That was our number one priority as food scarcity is a real challenge for our families. We want to make sure that their basic needs are met. A couple other important note, um, notes for our families and community members, our health department, our wellness center that's in our junior high is still going to serve our students. Um, you can call and make an appointment and we will have that appointment um, met at the district health department. So we're still providing those services, whether they're um, physical or mental health needs. Um, but we're still really directing our families and our students to their prim primary health care provider. Um, also today, we were able to distribute learning resources. We're focusing on review and enrichment for our kids. Uh, there's no expectation for parents to teach their children at home during these um, times. We definitely want to make sure our kids stick to a routine, um, that they have access to learning materials, books, enrichment, resources, not just uh, electronic or virtual, but also paper, pencil, as connectivity is also a challenge for many of our families. So if that is something that parents need and want, they can pick those up from buildings tomorrow morning from 7 to 8.30 or contact Central Office at 8765000 and we'll arrange for delivery of those materials and support resources as well. So lastly, uh, if there are any questions I can answer, but those are the big ones um, that we are answering for our families and, and our kids. But I just want to thank the community for being amazing and coming together during this very trying time. Our staff, specifically our staff, who have come together um, today to put those re resources together and volunteering their time to distribute food and taking care of each other in this trying time as well and reaching out to some of our kiddos who are really um, at risk or in need of touch points. So we're doing all of that during these next three weeks. So I just want to kind of lift our community up, our health care uh, providers, our um, public servants, and our staff. And it just makes me uh, humble and proud to be in a community that really leads by example and comes together in these trying times. So thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. I have I have a question. Yes. Um, <clears throat> would it, are the meals that you're providing just for CAP students? No. So right now we won't turn anyone away. Um, per federal guidelines, we are um, required to uh, charge adults three dollars, but we are not requiring any evidence or proof of how many meals kids need or parents need. We are also supporting communities of Mesick, Pine River, and Marion, but we won't turn any car away with food needs. So if people come to the Cadillac Junior High from uh, 10 to 11, 30, 12, and they need food, we are, we are distributing food as needed. Thank you. That's a great question. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Any other questions? Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Seeing Dr. Joe's further down in uh, your report, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Seeing no one else, we'll close public comment and move to the approval of the consent agenda. And this evening, <clears throat> we do have the minutes from the regular meeting that was held on March 2nd. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll second. Councilmember Ingalls? Yes. King? Shippers? Yes. Ellen Boss? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. So then that takes us to the communications for this evening. Okay. Um, first one is to approve the display of a banner from April 20th to the 27th, 2020 for National Library Week. I'll make a motion to approve the display of a banner from April 20th through 27th, 2020 for National Library Week. And I'll second it. Councilmember King, Shippers? Yes. Ellen Boss? Yes. Ingalls? Yes. Mayor Falcons? Yes. Motion carries. Next request is to approve the display of a banner from April 6th to the 20th, 2020 for Sexual Assault Awareness Month. I'll make a motion to approve the display of a banner from April 6th to the 20th, 2020 for Sexual Assault <coughs> Awareness Month. Support. Councilmember Shippers? Yes. Ellen Boss? Yes. Ingalls? Yes. King? Mayor Falcons? Yes. Motion carries. The next request is to approve the re uh, request for the pinwheels for prevention program with the changes noted. And I believe Marcus sent a revised council communication. And basically it's just saying that if the pinwheels are placed in the month of May, they will be left in the planners for just one week. Okay. I make a motion to approve the request for the pinwheels for prevention program with the changes noted. Support. House member Ellen Boss? Yes. Engel? Yes. King? Shippers? Yes. Mayor Falcon? Yes. Motion carries. The next request is to approve the display of a banner from April 27th to May 4th, 2020 for the Cadillac Area Symphony Orchestra. I'll make that motion to approve the display of a banner from April 27th, 2020 to May 4th, 2020 for the Cadillac Area Symphony Orchestra. I'll second. Councilmember Ingalls? Yes. King? Shippers? Yes. Ellen Boss? Yes. Mayor Falcons? Yes. Motion carries. And then that takes us to the city manager's report for this evening. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the city council. Um, as everybody obviously is well aware, you know, we're in the midst of a global pandemic. We've invited. Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Joe Santangelo uh, from Munson Healthcare Cadillac to come this evening to provide us with some tips. Also in the audience this evening uh, is Kevin Hughes with the, uh, with the Health Department, uh, District 10 of Michigan. Uh, following uh, their uh, update to the council and to the community, I'll then provide a, a brief operational update as well. So. Thank you very much. <coughs> Um, my name is Joe Santangelo. I'm a pediatrician and I'm the chief medical officer for Munson Healthcare Cadillac Hospital. 
I do have a, a short slide presentation. I was asked to speak for five to 10 minutes. This is a lot shorter than I usually speak for. So um, I'm gonna try to keep this as concise as possible. I'm gonna run through these slides relatively quickly, but if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me and then there will be additional time for questions at the end. So I wanted to talk briefly about what COVID-19 is. Most people are probably familiar by this point, but COVID-19 is a disease that's caused by a new virus. Coronaviruses is the name of a family of viruses that have been present for a long time. They cause common colds and other illnesses. SARS is another illness that's a coronavirus. This is a brand new coronavirus that has never been seen in the world before. The disease that this virus causes, COVID-19, is a pandemic. And what that means is it's a new virus that's spreading around the globe unchecked. So that's what a pandemic means. Initially, all the cases were from China or from people who had a contact within a specific region of China. It is now spreading throughout the globe without contact from people or contact with people who were from that area of China. COVID-19 can cause a mild illness. It can cause a cold or a flu-like illness. And it can also cause a much more severe illness that requires hospitalization and pneumonia and can cause death. It is spread through droplets of contaminated fluids. So some viruses are spread through the air. Uh, if you're in this room and have that virus and then walk out, the virus can hover in the air for long periods of time. COVID-19 is spread through droplets. So if I sneeze and I don't cover my mouth or I cough and I don't cover my mouth, that virus can come out in little tiny droplets that can then land on surfaces. And the virus can live there until someone else touches that surface and then touches their nose or their mouth. And that's how you can, how you can uh, catch this virus. There is a lot about COVID-19 that we don't know. Doctors like to spend months and years studying illnesses before we say anything. This illness has been around for four, year, four months, four months. So we just don't have hardly any information on it. We don't know how um, many people it kills. The current estimate is that it's somewhere between one and 4% of people who get COVID-19 will die from COVID-19. That number is much higher if you're either over the age of 70 or if you have other medical conditions like diabetes, heart disease, lung disease, um, or diseases that alter your immune system. We know that it's very contagious. Uh, it's estimated that somewhere between 30 and 60% of people in America will get COVID-19. We don't know that number. That number's a projection from China, South Korea, some of the other countries that have had this, but we don't know. We don't know how long you're contagious once you've gotten it. Some studies say three weeks, some studies say shorter, some longer. And we don't know how long it will spread. We don't know if it will go away in the summer and come back in the fall like the flu. We don't know because it, this is brand new. It's been around for four months. Nobody has any idea. I just wanted to show a couple of maps here. This is a week ago. This is seven days ago. These were all the COVID cases in the world. Outside of China, there were 32,800 cases. This is the map today. There's 88,400 cases. This is actually as of yesterday. 88,400 cases outside of China. And you see, sorry, the maps are not the exact same map, but you'll see that instead of that one big blob in China and then little dots everywhere else, there are big blobs completely covering Europe, uh, covering most of Asia, and obviously the United States is mostly covered as well. So I wanted to characterize just a few things that we should be thinking about prevention, isolation, and treatment. Prevention, um, there, the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, has a wonderful website that is very usable both by medical professionals, but also by lay people. It has sections on how to prepare your home, what to talk to your family about. It has uh, just lots of great information. It is our source of truth. It's our governmental source of truth as healthcare professionals, and it's easy to use. It is clear that if we are going to combat COVID-19, we need to slow how quickly this disease spreads through our communities. I feel very confident as a doctor and the chief medical officer of the hospital that there will be patients who have COVID-19 in Cadillac. It's only a matter of time. So the question is how many and how quickly does it spread? So if you are sick and you have symptoms of this, which are fever, cough, and fatigue, those three symptoms are by far and away the most common symptoms of COVID-19. So if you have fever, cough, and fatigue, then stay home. Do not go out in public. Don't go to the grocery store. Stay home. Even if you feel well, it is clear that preventing large groups of people from gathering reduces the spread of this illness, and that's why many of the actions that have been taken to this point ha have been taken. If someone is sick, please avoid contact with them. Don't touch your eyes, your nose, your mouth. If you can avoid it, you'll notice me holding my hands so that I don't do that. Um, Wash your hands very frequently, lather for, with soap and water for 20 seconds, which is a lot longer when you start actually counting how many seconds it is. And masks, you'll see people wearing masks. Masks are helpful in only two situations. If you are sick and you cough or sneeze, 
masks can keep the droplets that we were talking about before from spreading to surfaces. They're very effective that way. So if you're sick and you need to go to the doctor or you need to go get tested for COVID-19, please wear a mask. If you are caring for someone who's sick, as a doctor, if I take care of kids, I get coughed on in my face every day, just like Ms. Brown does at school. So if you are caring for someone who's sick and they might expose you, then wear a mask. Otherwise, just walking around, it is not worth wearing a mask. And if everyone wore a mask all the time walking around, we would not have enough masks left for the people who are caring for those who are sick and for those who are sick to wear masks to prevent the spread. It's very important that we do extra cleaning of high touch surfaces, door handles, light switches, the faucet of your sink, countertops. We're doing that at the hospital. Lots of people are doing it at home. I'm sure the city has taken similar steps and the school has as well. The hospital has taken an inventory of all of the personal protective equipment, that's masks and gloves and gowns. And we're training our staff. It's important that anyone know who's use, gonna use those equipment, that equipment knows how to use it. We are limiting vi visitors as per the governor's executive order. Um, there currently are not visitors allowed in the hospital except for a very small number of exceptions. The governor's executive order also asked us to screen all staff who are entering the hospital, which we began this morning as per the executive order. We're also doing a lot of coordination among Munson Healthcare so that we can address these things as a system so that all throughout Northern Michigan, patients are getting the excellent care that they expect to get. There is a really clear protocol for identifying people who have COVID-19. So any questionable case goes through a very specific process. This is being done very frequently in Cadillac. Patients are getting tested for COVID-19. The test is not performed locally. So right now, the only place that the actual test is run is at the state lab. Those uh, tests are collected here with a swab of your nose. We send the, the swab in a special kit to the state and the state runs the test. There is an expectation that private labs will be able to perform this test. Mayo Lab currently already has a test, Quest Lab has a test, but no private company has had the ability to, for us to test here in Cadillac yet. We're expecting that to change, but for now all of our tests go through the state lab. Every test that is run at the state lab has to have approval from our health department and our health department here in Cadillac and District Health Department 10 has been incredibly helpful in coordinating with the hospital, with our private care, our primary care providers to really streamline this process so we've been able to test as many people as we feel need to be tested. So far in Michigan, there are 53 confirmed cases. There are no confirmed cases in our service area as Munson Healthcare. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to, to describe different language. Isolation is what hospitals and doctors do. Isolation means you're sick and we're gonna keep you away from other people so that we don't spread this virus. Quarantine means you're not sick, but we're gonna keep you away from other people. So quarantine is, are the kinds of measures that have been taken by the governmental bodies. Isolation is what hospitals do. Just it's sometimes those words get used interchangeably and I think that's, uh, it's important to be clear. As far as treatment, there is no treatment for COVID-19 that is specific to the virus. Um, it's a virus, antibiotics don't make any difference, and in fact, in some cases can make it worse. From what we know right now, the vast majority of people, way over half of people who get this illness will have it like most people have the flu. You feel really terrible, you stay home, you drink fluids, and you treat your symptoms, and then you get better. If you get symptoms like that, you should contact your healthcare provider. You should contact your healthcare provider. Do not run to the emergency room. Don't run to the urgent care. Don't run to your provider's office. Contact by phone your healthcare provider. This will help your healthcare provider to decide whether you need to be seen. If so, how we can do that in the safest manner for you and for all of those around you. The hospital is preparing for an influx of patients with COVID-19. Nobody knows how quickly this will come, how it will spread. Nobody knows. It's all, there are lots of projections out there and they're only as good as the data that we have, which right now is brand new. So we don't know, but as a hospital and as a hospital system, Munson Healthcare is preparing for an influx of patients um, in Cadillac. So there's just a few last things. There is a lot that we don't know about this virus. So if you hear all these uh, crazy things that are being spread on Facebook and Twitter, just remember to check with those healthcare providers who um, know what's going on. And you can always use the CDC as a source of truth. Our only hope in Cadillac of not being overwhelmed by this virus is if we can slow how quickly it spreads. So closing the schools is a huge game changer for Cadillac. If we did not do that, 
kids, I'm a pediatrician, kids spread germs better than they do anything else. And so this would have spread very quickly. Um, so that was a real game changer. And these difficult measures that we're taking, limiting visitors to the hospital, restricting gatherings, these are very difficult, I know, for the governmental bodies to decide on. They are incredibly important, much more important than what I'm going to do as an individual doctor. So these community measures are just going to be crucial. Staying home if you're sick, cleaning your surfaces, washing your hands, um, and then leaning on the health department, who has been a great partner and is doing a great job looking out for us, and the medical community as we, as we work through this crisis. Happy to take any questions you might have. I had, I had a question. Um, the, what's the, the protocol for, like, for um, right now, um, Cadillac Munson Rehab, um, cardio rehab. I know the cardio rehab people are not six feet apart when they're there. My husband participates in that and in the, the other rehab across the street there. Um, what's the what's happening with that? I've yeah. had people ask me that too. It's a great question. So we're looking to or looking for advice to our infectious disease professionals, to our health department and our public health colleagues and to the government for when different phases of measures come in place. So just like the city, the hospital has a disaster plan where we close services in a very you know, specific order. Um, this morning, we canceled all elective surgeries at the hospital because we decided we could not have those patients who were well and coming in for a surgery that could be delayed without harm to the patient, that we couldn't have those people in the hospital and we could reutilize those resources to better um, fight the COVID-19 crisis. The specific outpatient services that you're talking about, we're looking to the leaders of those services, our infectious disease folks, and to our public health colleagues as to when they should close. I think it is an absolute expectation that all of those elective things will close. We hate to close now and prevent people from the services that are getting them better if they're not yet at risk, but then you don't want to wait too long either. So we're trying to find that exact spot and we're leaning on the specialists for that advice. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, I've had other questions. There's... Um, there's like for because of the fever is one of the things and uh, I've had people tell me um, that they're very concerned because normal fever reducers like ibuprofen or, or acetaminophen are not only ineffective but can exacerbate it. Are these is that true? So it's clear that normal fever reducers like ibuprofen, which is you know uh, Motrin or Advil, right. and then um, acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, clearly do work to reduce the symptoms. There was an, one report from one doctor in France um, that seemed to link taking ibuprofen to having a worse disease course. That has not been corroborated by anyone else. So it's just like we talked about before, a lot is unknown about this. If I personally were to catch COVID-19 tomorrow, I would take ibuprofen because I don't think there's enough scientific evidence for me to not take it. That could change over the next weeks and months as more people get it and we have more data. So we'll have more information as time goes by and it's important to listen to those, you know, the CDC and other healthcare professionals. Right now, we don't have evidence that that's the case. And those questions do uh, at the CDC website, if people um, have questions, or is there, a pl there probably isn't a place to ask questions, but they can search for their question and answer to their question. Yes. So that would be the best place for people with concerns like this to go to. I think that that would be one good place. And the other best place would be to um, reach out to your health care provider. Your health care provider is getting lots of information from Munson Healthcare, from the health department, from the CDC, from the state. Um, we're spreading information faster than we ever have before. So I think your health care provider would be another source of information. Great. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. What's your take on air travel during spring break? If you had a ticket to Tampa on Friday, would you get on that plane? Well, I'm, I'm not allowed to travel because of my role at the hospital right okay. now. So I'm, they, could. they allowed me to come this far from the hospital, and this is about as far as they're letting me go. Okay. Um, so it's a little different for me personally. Right. Um, I think that the airlines have done a great job in really trying to clean the planes, make things as clean as they can. Uh, planes are fairly empty right now. I heard that the most uh, flights are 30% capacity, so you're probably going to be not sitting right next to someone else. Okay. Um, the airports would be my biggest concern. Large groups of people, it's hard to separate yourself in an airport. Um, you're touching lots of surfaces that lots of other people touch and are hard to clean. So I would say I would follow the CDC's recommendations, which are if you are in a high-risk group, meaning you're over 60, you have any of those conditions that we talked about before, I absolutely would not travel, and I would really try to avoid public places. If you're younger than that, I think it's a personal decision. Thank you. Yes. Kevin, is there anything you want to add? No, I just I um, want to come along and. Can you come up to the microphone, please? Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah. 
Um, no, I, unless there are specific questions related to any of the executive orders, especially the new executive order that was issued today that closed bars, restaurants, and another number, number of other uh, large gathering and meeting places within the community, um, you know, I can try to answer those uh, to the best of my ability. I don't have any questions. I don't have any. Um, I don't think so. And these, the, the the information about this is getting out to folks. And yes, yes, good. yes. Um, we have a on our web page on the health department's web page. We do have a, a specific coronavirus page that people can go to. Um, you can also submit <laughs> questions into info at dhd uh, dot ten, dhd ten dot org. Dhd10.org. Yep. And the website is is www.dhd10.org. Okay. Thanks. I want to say thank you for being here this evening, and I, I want to echo what Jen said earlier about this community. I think that the work that's being done is absolutely incredible, and the collaboration and communication is going to make all the difference to the people who live here in our community. So thank you. Thanks. Okay. Doctor, thank you. Um, so as as I mentioned when doing the introduction wanted to sort of on their coattails talk just briefly about where we are operationally uh, and honestly it's um, it's a very fluid or dynamic uh, situation that we're experiencing uh, we've been keeping very close tabs on where other municipalities are regarding the same issue across the state um, we are preparing, um, uh, assuming uh, council also feels the same, uh, to shutter our city hall facilities to the public effective tomorrow morning. We'll still have staff coming in to report uh, to keep key functions going. Uh, we will still be um, willing to meet with people on an appointment type basis uh, so that business can still transpire, whether that's uh, permitting or inspectional services. We've temporarily postponed uh, some of those inspectional services like, like our rental inspection program as a for instance, but if someone's in the midst of a building project, I'll use Cadillac lofts as a for instance. We're still out there um, or our proxies are out there meeting, um, meeting with, the, with the builders and the contractors and making sure that we can still keep everything that we can at a local level moving forward. Um, you know, the idea is, again, it's all about limiting the exposure, uh, not just for uh, people that work for the city, but certainly for people that, that are coming in to do business with the city. We have already posted um, on our website and our Facebook site ways that people can continue to stay in contact with us and can continue to do business with us um, remotely. Uh, and certainly picking up the telephone is always an option as well. Uh, in terms of in terms of looking at you know a date um, right now uh, the thought is is to try to just sync ourselves up with with the April 6th date uh, but certainly that could that can change you know I was in one meeting earlier today where you know where the CDC was talking about groups of you know 50 people you know sort of being the maximum and now that's down to 10 an hour later so you know, this is an ever-evolving uh, situation that we're in. Uh, I'm aware of about 40 municipalities as of approximately an hour ago that have already uh, closed their doors, some of which did so last week. Um, but as I say that, you know, we're still open. Cadillac's still open for business. We're just asking that you don't come in. We'll close the facility down from public use. If somebody needs the police department also, as a, for instance, people uh, sometimes come in. Uh, to do that. We do have a call phone uh, outside of our doors and we're happy to escort people into the building as well. Can you also share with the council, just in case everyone hasn't read the updates from the Michigan Municipal League, what they're trying to accomplish about the Open Meetings Act and being able to conduct business? Uh, so certainly, yes. There's, um, there's also a legislative push to, uh, to make some formal changes to that level regarding um, how people can can join meetings remotely uh, in light of the pandemic and in practice people are, all, are already doing that right now so you know there's a lot of um, unknown and uncertain things that are happening right now regarding this 
Uh, and, you know, in terms of our next council meeting, our next council meeting right now is regularly scheduled for, uh, for April 6th, which is, you know, hypothetically the date that everything's supposed to sort of go back to normal. Uh, I don't know if that's really going to be the case or not, and I can tell you that um, that right now, you know, we're we're looking at at eliminating um, uh, the sort of public meetings that are between now and then as best as we can, unless there's something that absolutely needs to needs to move forward. Otherwise, we're just holding things back. Um, we are in the midst of our budgeting process, and certainly there are certain meetings that we're going to have to have. Uh, but as we move that, as we move closer to the date of April 6th, we'll certainly look at one whether or not we're opening our doors back up for the general public to just come in and, and access the building as normal. And two, we'll be looking at you know whether or not we'll be hosting the meeting similar to how we're doing now, or whether we'll be looking at uh, uh, a go-to meeting option where we're able to put together essentially our presentation, uh, do it virtually through. Uh, through the digital interface, there could even be call-in numbers. If I mean, there's a, there's similar to what we're doing now with one council member who's called in through that. There's a way to there's a way to do it. Um, you know, I, I don't have I all that, the answers, but I think that we need to, to prepare it. for that. Right. Um, so. Right. So. So we are. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, I certainly support um, those measures. I, I do you I don't think that formal motion, you don't need a motion no, that we support the? Oh, yeah, we're okay. okay. All right, you guys yeah. are okay. Oh, with absolutely. That? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same absolutely. thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Hey, Marcus. Yes. Sorry. Um, can you talk for a second about the Open uh, Open Meetings Act and how I'm able to participate in the meeting now remotely, or or if there's a update? Uh oh. What do you ask? Could you have him repeat that? Uh, Robert, can you repeat that? Um, I, I know well, you mentioned to me on the phone that I was able to participate in a meeting remotely, but that wasn't always, you know, allowed or possible. Can you just talk about, like, the law or was it the emergency order or we're just always yeah, allowed so, to participate remotely? Yeah, so the uh, Governor Whitmer issued an emergency order over the weekend regarding um, um, remote access for public meeting purposes under – under the order, it was advised that uh, public meetings should not occur unless absolutely necessary. Uh, otherwise, they should basically be postponed and rescheduled for another day. Her uh, edict was specifically regarding um, the operations of state agencies. However, local municipalities are also following that order in practice, uh, uh, frankly, as of today. Today's the first business day since that order came out. There is... Um, conversation going on about uh, whether or not there'll be an amendment or some other push to have additional language put into it um, uh, that specifies local units of government. Whether that happens or not uh, is unbeknown to me. I'm not even certain if there's enough legislators that are still um, still in Lansing for them to for them to do that. But um, that's the update. So we decided to to move forward accordingly. And the only uh, the only uh, policy that we had was just simply that. It was a policy that was in place uh, regarding our own local uh, board. Mike, do you. you want to add to that? No, no, I think there is some confusion over the language. Mm -hmm. of, I mean, you can read it several different ways um, under the directive because it's um, directed at state of Michigan public bodies, but then tries to separate out uh, public or state agencies versus subdivisions <coughs> of the state, which the city is. So, um, but I know that MML is trying to clarify that. So, yeah. I, I'm I'm comfortable with proceeding under the same directive um, as uh, the governor has given to those state agencies as well. <coughs> that would allow participation by telephone conference. Right now, the Open Meetings Act actually doesn't um, prohibit um, attendance by telephone conference. Um, and we've always taken the position with our clients that attendance um, is permissible. Uh, there was um, several years ago, probably 2012-ish, there was uh, proposed legislation that would have prohibited attendance by telephone conference, uh, which is then you have to ask why would you do that if it was um, not permitted already. 
So I think it is permitted. We had advised our clients over the years that as long as you have a quorum present, participation by other members of the, of the um, public body could attend by telephone conference. The um, executive directive issued by the governor specifically says now that you can obtain that quorum by way of remote participation like telephone conference. And, and okay, thank you for clarifying that. Sure. Our charter doesn't prohibit. No. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, next up is uh, uh, speed radar signs. We have uh, talked uh, publicly, um, especially after um, uh, we had members from the community calling to talk about uh, concerns about uh, traffic around, around the community. Uh, we had talked publicly about enhancing our ability of monitoring uh, and also having the, the, uh, the driving <coughs> public see their own speeds as they're approaching uh, certain zones around the community. Uh, and in response to that, we have acquired, uh, I believe, three of these units. And um, uh, we have uh, a good demo, right, that you're going to show. So I'm just wondering if we need to move the, uh, before you start the demo, maybe just move the podium a little bit. So, Officer Taylor's here, and our Public Safety Director is here, Adam, uh, to just talk a little bit about about that. But but I will ask you when you start the demo, you got to go back to the mic, otherwise nothing gets picked up for people on at home with TV. So I apologize. So there's the mic. <laughs> Can we move that over there then. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Or yeah, it, that, no. yeah. yeah. You're okay. I'm thinking of logistics. Can people at home see that? Where is it? Here, so yes, there's your camera. Yeah. We'll stand up up there. Let's see. Oh, perfect. Maybe. Maybe yes, maybe <laughs> no. Don't drop it. All right. <laughs> there you go. So I tasked Sergeant Taylor with, uh, with looking into these units. There were several options out there. Um, he came up with this option. This one actually mounts to existing speed limit signs. It's much smaller than the trailer that we have. Um, we were able to pick up three of them. <clears throat> and, uh, and when we did so, uh, they have two batteries in them, and they're also solar power backup. So they actually last for, for quite some time. I'm going to let Lance talk about it because he, uh, he did all the research behind this. Okay. Um, like the director said, we've, we've purchased three of the signs. Um, they are portable. We'll be able to move them to different spots in the city as needs dictate. Um, right now we have one up on East Division and one up on Mitchell Street. Uh, we left this one down so we could kind of show it off today. Um, I can run it through a little bit of a demo mode for you guys so, so everybody can see what it's capable of doing. It links to Bluetooth right to a phone or a computer. Um, you can see the different displays on there. We're able to program in different, uh, different language at the bottom, different speed settings, um, stuff like that, just to kind of get the attention to traffic. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen the ones in town yet, if they've had an effect on, on, on your driving as you're, as you're coming into town. But, um, I always drive under the speed limit, so I would. That's, and that's the right answer. So. <laughs> Um, you know, I've, I've noticed too, even when I'm driving the speed limit, when I see these signs, um, we took a, a trip out west this summer and every little town that we came to had one and it grabs your attention immediately. You check what your speed limit is, whether you were paying attention or not. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, I think it'll be a, a great asset to the city to help, you know, help monitor the speeds. Um, it's also able to record, we can do some data collection on it also as far as the amount of traffic and, and speeds. So Tra traffic counts, correct. Yes. Yep. Uh, see what trends are. Yep. So it gives us it gives us some additional function. Correct. Yep. Yep. Currently, we have one placed up on Division Street, and we have another one placed right on Mitchell Street in the downtown. Yep. Excellent. And just to to add what where Adam is going with that, you know, we have three of them that we now have. Um, they're marketed as being portable. Um, meaning we can take them and move them around. 
Uh, we'll see in practice how, how easy that is to do, uh, but that is what our intent is because we still, we still also have the trailer mounted device. Mm -hmm. Uh, the police department does maintain essentially a list of, of locations based upon not just where, where we or they would like to see these, but also where uh, complaints or resident concerns okay. have come in saying, hey, you know, can we, can we get the speed trailer in our neck of the woods? And so this will now provide us with even greater opportunity to hit more areas of the city versus just one at a time now. It could be, frankly, up to four at a time. Uh, which is a significant difference and improvement. So that's great. great. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. So, where did we get the signs from? Um, How did we get the signs? Elan City is the name of the uh, the company that we went through. Um, the model is an Evolus. Uh, they have different sizes, and you know, obviously, shapes, sizes, and all that. This one seemed to fit our needs the best. And these are funded through through us. Yeah, we. we uh, funded through the city, so. We did a joint venture with the street department and out of the police department budget to, to fund this. How okay, much are great. they? It was a total of seven. Yeah, they're about twenty-four hundred dollars a piece. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, and then, and then they threw in the solar. That's with the batteries and solar panels. Yep. Yes. Yeah. That's great that you work together to make it happen. So, mm -hmm. thank you. I want to say um two things really quick. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I wanted to thank you guys for, for getting this done and working on this. Um, you know, I believe in the uh, radar feedback signs. I think they change people behave, change people's behavior. I am one of the people who see the radar feedback signs and then slow down. Um, and then, you know, this is also one of the most common complaints that I get as far as, like, number of people not always in the same spot around the city, but, you know, people speeding in front of my house is something that I hear from a lot of people. So, um, you know, I'm happy that we have this. And I think it, um, it's also nice to be responsive to people. And what I think was, was very quickly, um, very quick turnaround. So good job, everybody who was working on this. Thank you. Thank you. They do also have a racing feature, if you will, to prevent people from trying to set the top score on speed. So we can, set, we can set a maximum speed where, where you'll see like that exclamation point up there. We can set that as you know, basically a warning as opposed to showing, you know, somebody trying to set a top speed record on it. Is that so, really a thing? Uh, yes. <laughs> sadly, sadly, it can be. So. Oops, I just touched my What's face. Nice <laughs> uh, yeah, I can link this right to my phone, right to, right to my patrol car, and download data right from there and make adjustments as necessary wow. right from there. So, If you ever see anything... Um, inappropriate flashing on it, please let us know. Yeah, please let us know. Oh, no. <laughs> that means somebody else linked into it. Uh, yeah, right. right. Yeah, it thanks. In Chicago. It happens everywhere. It, yeah, with the big, big, big signs over <laughs> yeah. the highway. There were some yeah. real fun things that were posted. Yeah, like zombies are coming. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like from 10 years ago. That did happen, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank you. Thank you. Um, the uh, the last item under the city manager's report this evening is a recommendation regarding our uh, road salt purchase for next winter. It's hard to imagine that we're perhaps already through uh, this winter, but uh, utilizing uh, the state of Michigan My Deal purchasing um, uh, program, we are recommending uh, uh, the purchase of road salt. We believe we'll need approximately 2,000 uh, tons of road salt to cover the winter. Uh, it's anticipated that the uh, the cost of the salt is going to be about $75 a ton, uh, which brings it up to around $150,000 a year. Um, this is, um, I, how do I call this, the, the sort of par for the course. We, we do this every year. Is the 2,000 tons the same as last year? I apologize. I didn't look that up. No, that's okay. I, I didn't yes. look that up either. Yes. Is it? Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Right. Did we use last year's supply up? We're oh, getting there. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's was, down. Yeah, I, I wish I had the latest number. I was pulling it out, but it's going to take me about two more minutes. So. Yeah, it seemed um, to be an easy winter, but at yeah, times. Yeah, but we've had several. Yeah. For a while there, it was all ice. Yep. All yeah, ice right, and, right, right. Really slippery stuff, so we were, mm. we were putting it down pretty heavy. The street men did a good job. Yep. And then the, um, you know, we put a lot of it on 131, and the state reimburses oh, right. us for that. So that that's a good thing. So okay. thank you. Yeah. And we do have that. obviously the funds yeah. available in our stores and garage fund for the for the acquisition. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll make a motion to authorize the city 
to participate in the my deal competitive bidding process and approve the commitment to purchase up to 2,000 tons of seasonal road salt through the resulting state of Michigan contract at the unit cost bid approved by the state of Michigan. I'll second. Councilmember King? Yes. Shippers? Yes. Ellen Boss? Yes. Ingalls? Yes. Mayor Falcons? Yes. Motion carries. All right, this evening we do have the minutes from the <coughs> last uh, airport authority meeting for uh, your review when you uh, have time. And at this time, it takes us to the last public comment for this evening. Seeing no one, we'll close public comment and move to good of the order. Does anybody have anything additional this evening? Um, I want to let folks know that the Youth Council meeting scheduled for this week is canceled. Um, hopefully we will be able to reschedule for next month, but as I said before, we are going to just go with the flow. Mm -hmm. And as things happen, we'll update on the, um, the Youth Council Facebook page and maybe on the city page too with sure. when we when that happens and people please um heed the advice of our experts here and i'm just i'm so proud of, of our community for the way people are stepping up and helping each other i was in the grocery store the other day um like saturday morning and uh there were i was at aldi and there were just these long lines and those people were just working their took us off so i just said to everybody hey folks Everybody's looking scared, you know, and just faces down. I'm trying to smile at everybody who passes, and I finally said, how about we give a big round of applause for these people who are working so hard for all of us? And everybody, stand in line in the store, started clapping and cheering. And after that, folks were smiling and talking to each other. So remember that while we go through this, we have to show some love, too. We have to keep six feet apart, but we can smile at each other, and we can uplift each other. Call your elderly neighbors. Don't go visit them. See if they're okay, if they need anything. If you're, if you're going to, out to the market, folks that can't get there, pick up something extra for them if you can. Help, help each other out. Um, you could drop it off on their front stoop. You can wave it to each other through the windows. We've been seeing all these videos coming out of Europe where people are opening their windows and singing together. And um, that's something that we could do as, as neighbors here in town. We gotta still be there for each other while being away from each other. So I just want folks to remember that. Good advice. Well, I'd like to congratulate the Lady Vikings basketball team and the boys basketball team season it was so successful unfortunately got cut short coaching staff everybody that helped out um, the bowling team in their second year I believe was second in the state which bowling has a rich history in Cadillac with three bowling leagues lanes at one time so they had great seasons unfortunately they didn't get to finish but congratulations to everybody involved All set? All set. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. There you go. Okay, uh, this evening we do need to uh, have a motion to go into closed session. Would someone like to make that motion? I'll make the motion to go into closed session. Let me look at what I have to say. Um, to adjourn to closed session to discuss a written confidential legal opinion with the city attorney and to invite Adam Ojepka, Director of Public Safety. Did I say that right, Adam? Very close, very close. I'll I'll second I'll that. get it one day. <laughs> Councilmember Shippers? Yes. Ellen Boss? Yes. Ingalls? Yes. King? Yes. Mayor Falcons? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Doctor, thank you. Should I go back into open session? I'll second it. Councilmember Alamas? Yes. Ingalls? King? Yes. Shippers? Yes. Mayor Falcons? Yes. Motion carries, and with that, we'll adjourn the meeting. Oops. Very good. Did I miss it? You missed it.